Hi, Ms. Tucker here, and today we're going to look at Biochemistry Basics video number four, and those have to do with the similarities that we're going to see um, in all of our macromolecules. And macromolecule, of course, means large molecule. So really big molecules, when you get a bunch of these guys together, you'll usually get a functionality of a cell, and that's kind of the point that we're working up to. The cell is the single functional unit in biology, and by understanding what a cell is made up of, uh, we can understand why cells um, behave in certain ways. Um, we're looking at the similarities because there's some consistency in the structure um, which will play out into the consistency of the function. The structure directly affects the function of everything in biology. So we are learning more about the structure in order to understand more about the function. So let's go ahead. The first similarity that you're going to see and you already know plenty about are the elements that are involved in making up each of these molecules. So this is kind of the most zoomed in we're going to get in this class. You've already seen this uh, periodic table for biologists. The elements that we're looking at, of course, are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur, which are all kind of over here, except for hydrogen, which is way over here by itself. Um, so these six elements make up the majority of everything that we will see in biology, or at least in biochemistry. Um, not all of them are going to be involved in making each type of macromolecule, but they will be involved in some combination. For example, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen make up the structure of carbohydrates. So there isn't any of the other three elements found in the class of carbohydrates, just these three. And that'll change depending on which macromolecule we're looking at. But of course you already know this, so we won't spend too much time on it. The second thing that we're going to look at is the overall structure. And like I said before, macromolecule means large molecule. Before we even get to this point though, we have to look at what macromolecules are made up of. Of course, the molecules themselves are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. But then we have these molecules or building blocks that make up the larger units of the cell. Our four classes of macromolecules are polysaccharides or carbohydrates, fats, proteins, and nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are DNA and RNA, and because they're so important in biology, we'll talk about them extensively when we get to our genetics unit. For right now, we're gonna focus on these three, but these patterns that we see here will play over, of course, carry over into uh, the structure of DNA and RNA when we get to that point. So the building blocks of the cells um, are the actual molecules. So these are kind of the smaller molecules that make up our macromolecules. And the smaller um, units of the macromolecules are also called monomers. And monomer means one. So the individual unit of a polysaccharide is a sugar. The individual unit of a fat is a fatty acid. So the Sugar is a monomer of a polysaccharide, and amino acid is a monomer of a protein. Does that make sense? These large molecules, another term for macromolecule, is called a polymer. And polymer means lots, more than two. Um, the, it could be five, it could be 5,000. And polymer just means many of a single thing, and this is the single thing that make up our macromolecules. Similarity number three is how they are formed. So here we have two individual monomers and they form a, not a polymer, but a dimer. And a dimer, of course, means two. So we have, if we zoom or go back a little bit in the video, if we go back here, we have two individual units. These are, um, happen to be carbohydrates you can see here's carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. So two individual units, and when they come together, they are gonna form a dimer, which is the beginning of a polymer. In this case, if you watch where the bond occurs, I'm removing H2O. So I'm removing this unit right here, which is water. That's why it's called dehydration, because I'm actually removing water from the structure. We go back a little bit, you can see it comes right out of there. And once that is removed, the bond is gonna form between the carbon on one of these molecules 
and the oxygen on another molecule. So now that is considered a dimer and water comes out and that's why it's called dehydration because I'm actually removing water from this bond. The same thing occurs but in an opposite way with their digestion. We're going to pause this. So here we see the formation of this dimer and when we look at it backwards, if we're trying to digest, so sucrose is table sugar, um, the kind of sugar that you put, um, that you find in apples and peaches and pears, and you have to digest it to be able to use these individual units. So, so when you digest it, an enzyme, which we'll get into later, actually puts water back into the bond. Watch that again in super slow-mo. Here's my water molecule. And I'm gonna break that water apart and put those atoms exactly where they were before the reaction took place. That kind of reaction is called a hydrolysis reaction. And it's called hydrolysis because hydro means water and lysis, which you will see a lot this year, that term and that suffix anyway, means to split. So there are molecules in your body that are responsible for actually splitting apart water. So here we take it out, that's a dehydration, we're removing water, and in a hydrolysis reaction, we split that water apart and put it right back in there. Don't worry if this seems really confusing because we're gonna do this in class with those molecular models that you've seen in previous videos. Um, but for right now, you might wanna watch this a couple of times so that you understand where that water comes from in a dehydration reaction and um, where it goes as well. Important terms to remember and I actually need to add one to this list. We're gonna put another thing down here. Actually, we might put it right here, a dimer. So monomer, of course, means one unit. A dimer is two units. And a polymer is more than two units. So you're gonna see mono throughout the next several videos as well as di and poly as prefixes for when we're describing the uh, level of organization of all of the macromolecules. The other important terms to remember, of course, are two reactions, and these are dehydration and hydrolysis reactions. So we're gonna write reactions so you remember that. And of course, the last one that you'll need to remember, which you will not easily forget once we finish this whole series, is macromolecule. And macro means large, and molecule, of course, is just a compilation of atoms. If you do have any questions about the video, be sure to jot them down and bring them into class tomorrow because we will play with these terms a little bit more um, and actually build some of these molecules and look at um, the dehydration and hydrolysis reactions as they occur. Also, be sure to take the quiz. Uh, make sure that you take it as many times as you need to get the grade that you like. Uh, but once the class occurs that you're in, that will be the end of that quiz uh, for you. So make sure you just do it as many times as you want so you can get the grade that you need. Um, I guess that's about it for now. And if you do have any more questions, you can ask them in class, class tomorrow. All right, see you soon.